In this tutorial, you will be introduced to document sets. Before continuing with this video, it is strongly recommended that you first view the video on content types in the SharePoint Fundamentals group of videos. SharePoint document sets provide the capability to manage a set or package of documents as a single entity. For example, a group of documents that make up a proposal, such as a project specifications document, a pricing list, and a presentation or in the case of a manufacturing company that produces a standard set of documents related to the design, testing, and fabrication for each product it manufactures. Or it could be a collection of files that need to be approved together. You can use document sets to handle these types of scenarios. Document sets are based on the concept of a folder, but with much more capability. One of the features of a document set is that it comes with what's called a welcome page. It's like a cover sheet displaying some high-level information about the set and a list of the documents in the set. When you are configuring a document set, you can optionally do the following. Specify any default documents that you want to be automatically included each time a new instance of the document set is created, such as standard document templates or forms. Specify any shared metadata columns that you want synchronized to all documents in the set. Customize the document set welcome page to include project information or resources to help team members who are working with the documents in the document set. Apply workflow actions to the document set, such as a review or approval workflow. In this video, I will be creating a document set for the sales site to manage all documents related to sales proposals. The sales account managers will then be able to create a document set for each new proposal they are working on. With that document set, I will demonstrate how to identify default documents that will automatically be included with each new document set. This proposal document set will include a project specification document and a pricing sheet. I will also create two metadata columns for the document set, which will be account manager and project status. This information is selected once for the proposal project and automatically synchronized down to each document that is created or uploaded to the document set. So let's get started here and our first step is to enable the document set feature for the entire site. In order to use the document set feature, a site collection administrator must activate the document set site collection feature using the following steps. Choose site actions and then site settings. And if you didn't start on the home site like I did not, I was on the sales site, under site collection administration, select go to top level site settings and under the Site Collection Administration section, choose Site Collection Features. Look for the Document Sets feature in the list, and over to the right, if the feature has already been activated as it has been here, the button will be labeled with Deactivate. If it is not activated, the button will be labeled with Activate. Click the button to activate. So now I'll return to the Sales site. The second step is to create a content type for the sales proposal document set. So to do that, go to the Site Actions menu and then choose Site Settings. Under Galleries, I'll click on Site Content Types and then Create. I'm going to name this content type Proposal. For the parent content type group, I'm going to go in and select document set content types and that sets the parent content type to document set. For selecting which group I want to place my new content type in, I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call it sales. And I'll choose OK to save. As I mentioned earlier, I want to add two metadata columns to this document set for account manager and project status. Those columns are added as part of this content type and columns added to a content type are site columns. So in the columns section, I'll click on add from new site column. And the first column I'll create is the account manager column. So I'll type the name in. And this will be a person or group type column. So I can select an existing user on the site as the account manager. In this section, I choose which group I want to store this custom column in, and I'm going to just create a new group here for sales. 
and then I'll scroll to the bottom and choose OK to save. And then I'll create my second column, again choosing Add from New Site column. Type in the name and this will be called Project Status. And this will be a single line of text column. And I'm going to add this to the sales group I created for the last column. Then again to the bottom and choose OK to save. So here I can see the two custom columns I created for this document set content type. And the last thing I need to do while I'm still here in the proposal content type settings screen is add the two default documents that I want to belong as part of each new document set. So I'll click on document set settings and I'll go down to the default content type area and content type is a document and then what I need to do is just click on browse and select the first document and here's the product specification template and then I also need to add the pricing template so I'll click on add new default content click on browse again and choose product pricing and in the section below in shared columns I can choose the columns that I just created to be shared for all document types in the document set, which would be the account manager column and the project status. These will only have to be selected once when the document set is created and that information will automatically be synchronized down to all documents added to the document set. In the welcome page column section, I can choose which columns to show on the welcome page for the document set and I'm going to choose account manager. In this welcome page section, I can also choose to customize what the welcome page looks like by clicking on this link, but for this video I won't be getting into that. And then I'll choose OK to save the settings. So now this document set is ready to be used. Our last step is to configure the library to use document sets and add this document set to that library. So I'll open the library named Sales Proposals and to enable the library to use a document set I go to the library tab and go to library settings and then I'll go to advanced settings and in the content type section at the top I'll choose yes to allow management of content types and go to the bottom and choose OK then to add the document set content type to the library down in the content type section I'll click on Add from Existing Site Content Types. I stored that in a group I had created called Sales and there's my proposal content type. I'll add it to the box to the right and choose OK. So now down in the content type section for the library proposal has been added. So I'll go back to the library itself and add a new document set. So to add document sets for sales proposals to this library, I do that using the Documents tab and then clicking on the New Document drop-down. And here's the second choice is Proposal. Notice at the top here it says New Document Set Proposal. I need to give my document set a name. I can put in a description. Here are the two metadata fields I had added for Account Manager and Project Status. So I've finished filling in the information, giving the document set a name, description, identified who the account manager is, and entered the project status, and then I'll choose OK. So here is the document set. The welcome page displays at the top showing the name of the document set, the description, and the account manager. Below the welcome page is where the documents in the set are listed. Notice the two default documents I had identified when creating the document set are included with this new set for the pricing and specification documents. The name of the document set was automatically added to their names. These documents can be opened and filled in with the information for this particular proposal. Any number of additional documents related to the proposal can also be uploaded to this document set as well. When a document set is open, a document set tab is added to the top. This provides commands that can be executed against the entire set instead of individual documents. 
I can choose to edit the properties of the set, such as the set name, description, and metadata values. I can set permissions for the document set. Delete will delete the entire set, including all documents in the set. I could email a link to the set. And in libraries that have the versioning enabled, I could use the Capture Version button to take a snapshot of the entire contents of the set at once. You can choose to capture a version of the set as often as you feel necessary. Use the Workflows button to kick off any workflows that have been created to run on the document set, such as review or approval workflows. So as you can see, there are many advantages to grouping related documents in a document set rather than in a standard folder.